Hello, I'm Lizelle Sambri, and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things traditional publishing, writing, and a little bit of reading. And welcome to this vlog. Sorry if you can hear this chair squeaking. I'm trying so hard. <laughs> to stay still and it's still squeaking. Um, but obviously I am not in my office. Um, I am elsewhere. Um, so I'm currently in Iowa for a friend's wedding. And so yeah, that is why I'm not in my usual place. <laughs> um, and I will not have my little calendar thing that I like to do really just because I'm kind of just going to be working on one thing this whole vlog so uh it doesn't seem to be a lot of point of calendar <laughs> so um yeah so this month is a little bit of like I guess a semi-hectic month because I'm doing a bit of traveling for the first couple weeks of November um but what I'm going to be working on this whole month is my first developmental edit for A Mastery of Monsters that I got from my editor. Um, so I got an edit letter from her um, about kind of, you know, things that need to be fixed. Um, and so I did end up needing to take like some time off to chill and like pretty much most of this week also um but I because I was overtired <laughs> honestly I was overtired um and I just needed the break um but uh this week earlier this week I like finally got like the bug in me to like do stuff and like work on my book um so what I've been working on thus far is just kind of like so I plan my books out in plotter which is a like plotting software I have a video where I review it that I will link down below um and so I, because I wrote this book using that, I already have something in there. And so what I wanted to do because I'm going to be revising is I just wanted to go through the manuscript and I wanted to update all the little chapter summaries I have, which is like, I say the date of each chapter and like what happens in every single scene. So I actually break the chapters into scenes and I say what happens in each scene. I also put what characters are in the scene, um, what locations they are in the scene. Um, and then I also organized um so I have a scene level which is all the different scene I have a chapter level which is all the chapters and like the scenes fall into the chapters and I now added this new level at the top um which is my save the cat beats so I was always using my save the cat beats but I realized I could I could organize it that way in plotter as well and so now I have all my save the cat beats at the top and then the chapters are organized within those beats and then the seeds are organized within those chapters which is exactly the way I organize my book on Scrivener so it's really helpful so I was just going through the whole manuscript and making sure all of that was up to date so that's really good and I'm feeling good about that so I feel like I'm like even though this is kind of my off time now I feel like I'm getting back into the swing of things and I feel like that break really helps me because I am already feeling more motivated to work on the book so um, my deadline for the book is um, actually in December so I'm going to be working on it all of November and like a good chunk of December as well um, but yeah so my edit letter isn't like super super in depth it's really mostly world building things and some like character clarifications but it's I would say the bulk of it is just questions about world building which is what I expected so that's mostly what I'm going to be working on um, and sorry that I haven't mentioned this yet but if this is your first time watching a writing vlog from me um, I'm talking about uh, the book A Mastery of Monsters which is a young adult dark academia fantasy that will be coming out from Simon Schuster in 2025 I assume in spring but I'm not 100% on the season so do not hold me to it um, but yeah so that is the book that I am working on um, and it's about a girl that has to join this kind of secret society um, in which you know some people have the ability to turn into monsters and they work with partners um, and it's a whole thing <laughs> um, and she kind of gets involved in the society um, in the interest of saving her brother so that's basically what the book is about and so yeah I just like I the good thing about these edits is like all the questions that my editor was asking I actually already know pretty much all the answers to them there's not really anything for me to figure out um I because I understand everything she was like how does this work and how does this work and how does this work sometimes in world building those questions come up and the problem is I'm like oh I actually don't know how that works but I've done <laughs> so much prep work for this world building I have an answer 
to every single question she posed. I just need to get it into the book. Um, so the edits aren't, I feel like are going to be like pretty good and like <laughs> simple for me to do. It's just like, I, I have to have the time to do it and figure out that there are some also like little character things and those are things I need to figure out a bit more. So, so there are some characters that um, have smaller roles in the story and because of me trying to fit in the whole cast of characters, I kind of like gave them smaller roles in the book, but my editor wanted to see them um, more involved. And so it's just kind of going to be me figuring out how I'm going to make them more involved. I suspect that I'm going to have to add in some new chapters in order to do that. But I don't want to overdo it because my editor said that she thought the pacing was like spot on, like great and so I don't want to add chapters and like mess with the pacing that I've already like worked hard to like get done really well and so I'm it may just be me figuring out how to do those character things in already existing chapters um or like adding on a little bit to existing chapters um, so that I'm not having to mess with my pacing too much. But I don't know, some things I think might just have to have a new chapter. But anyway, so that's what I'm working on now. So I think I'm going to kind of do be doing bits and pieces like between this week. Next week is like my really hardcore. I'm going to plan all my edits. And then the week after that, once I'm home again, is when I'm going to start like <laughs> hardcore doing all of the edits. Um, but it's good because I feel like I set up myself with a really good foundation for getting this work done. If we could run it, if we could run it back, and do you wonder, if we could run it back, if we could run it, if we could run it back, and do you wonder, if we could run it back. home. Uh, so yeah, I had a great time traveling around. I got to go to Lainey's wedding, which I will insert some sort of picture that she has on her social media because I suck and I didn't take any pictures, which is so common of me. Um, but yeah, I did it. But it was wonderful. Got to hang out with like all of our author tube friends. So obviously the lady was there getting married. Um, and Laura and Lindsay and Alexa. And then Kevin unfortunately got sick right before, so he couldn't make it. But I will link all those author tubers down below, though chances are if you follow me, you will also follow them. But it was just wonderful getting to see them all and hang out in person and spend time and celebrate Lainey. So that was wonderful. Um, and then I also got to do a little meet and greet event at the Barnes and Noble in um, Oak Brook, Oak Brooks, Oak Brooks, Oak Brook, <laughs> which was great. They were really, really lovely. And thank you so much to everyone that like came out to like come and get their book signed. Everyone I chatted with was wonderful. And it was just really nice to get to do that just because I had been in the area. So I had asked if we could arrange something through my publicist who like did a fantastic job getting that organized. And so I really appreciated getting to do that. Um, also my first time being in a Barnes and Noble. Um, every other time when I go to the States, I usually just go to indie bookstores. So I'd never 
actually been to a Barnes and Noble location before. So it was cool that my first time going there was to do an event. So that was wonderful. Um, and then I visited my mom for a week, which was also great. Um, but I'm very glad to be back home because <laughs> a lot of traveling is like really tiring and I'm so excited to not be traveling again until, um, the Christmas break holidays. So very happy about that, but just like a great time overall. Um, and then a master of monsters wise. So pretty much like kind of like that in that first week, I started to like feel again, like, oh, I could kind of work on this. And I was doing a little bit of prep work. Um, but the week when I was at my mom's was when I actually started planning out all of my edits. And so those are all planned for me to start editing on Monday. But I've decided to do a different style of revision. So usually what I do for my revisions is that I um, basically I split the whole book into chapters based on kind of like a time period. So uh, usually I want to do three maximum four chapters editing per day. And so I'll set that up. And then I basically just like work through and revise each chapter and I will revise multiple things. Everything that needs to be revised in that chapter, I will do on that day when I'm supposed to be working on that chapter. And I just do that continuously until I reach the end. And then I hand that in. And I have decided to do things differently this time. So this time I've decided to work on one aspect of the book at a time or like multiple small aspects of the book. And so what I mean by this is like, for example, on one day I'll work on adding all the world building details that needed to that need to be added to the book throughout the whole book. Um, and so because of the way that I work, I have very detailed chapter summaries for each chapter and each scene as well. And so in those chapter summaries, it lists the date, it lists everything that happens in that chapter. There's also a note of every single character that is in that chapter, where that chapter takes place. And so because of those, when I plan my edits, I'm able to plan them very specifically to each chapter and like, okay, I'm going to drop this world building detail in this one and this one and this one. Um, and so I've decided that it might be better for me to just work through one aspect through the entire book and then it'll be easier for me to make sure that I've hit on all the points of that that I need to throughout the entire novel because I find that what happens especially when I'm working on a bigger project um, like that has so many words and so many chapters is that stuff I've worked on at the beginning by the time I get to later weeks I kind of forget what I've done and and so it makes it harder to carry threads throughout the entire book. Um, and I find that that happens where I'll lose the plot of a character or a character will start to feel like they're kind of disappearing towards the end of the book or characters will suddenly appear towards the end of the book and they haven't quite been set up in the beginning, but like I needed them at this point. And I just wondered <laughs> if doing it this way would make it better and would make it a lot easier for me to cohesive, cohesive carry something throughout the novel. So I've decided to try that. And so that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, this process as well uh, has made it so that things are a little bit faster too. And I'm hoping that maybe this will make the workload feel maybe less heavy for me each day. Um, so those are kind of the multiple reasons why I'm trying that out. And then at the very end, I will take five days to read through the entire manuscript. And so this way, I can still like have this chance to read through the whole book fairly quickly. Um, I mean, reading through <laughs> what is like a hundred thousand plus word book in five days is like pretty quick to me. Um, and that will let me catch any little things that might have gone awry or like if for some reason I messed up in a chapter summary and like, oh, I, sh I was supposed to add a world building detail here, but I didn't realize like that read through will help me catch all of those things and get them ready. And so that's my plan for revisions. Um, and so we will see how that goes. I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that this will be a better process for me, but I'm excited to at least try it and see how it goes. Um, because there's just so many different elements to this book that it kind of like, <laughs> it's a little bit overwhelming to just do it all to try and do multiple things in each chapter. And I find that like, when I'm trying to do a lot of things in one chapter, I start skipping things naturally and I start being like oh is that thing really that important do I really need it in here and then I feel like <laughs> 
things just get really awry and that's where I stop following my plotter thing as well and it's like it's fatigue really and so I'm hopeful that this will create a better workflow for me so that is my plan um and I will check in with you at the end of doing that for a bit <laughs> Time you're watching this video the whole thing is probably already over and done with <laughs> but i'm very very excited to share that delicious monsters was nominated for a goodreads choice award so in the young adult fantasy section which is really really exciting <laughs> um it's so funny because as uh people were like making their goodreads predictions because i watch like booktube stuff and so i was like enjoying seeing people make their predictions and i was like i wonder and then i was like nope I'm gonna stop you right there lizelle that's not for you. And I was like, you know what, brain? You are 100% right. <laughs> and I moved on with my life. Um, and then last night at like 11 or something, someone tagged me and they were tagged me in like voting for Delicious Monsters. And I was like, that looks like Goodreads. And I was like, is that list out? I was like, when was that supposed to come out? I was like, is that out now? And I looked and I saw and it was just like, Wow. So very, very excited um, to have been nominated for that. I'm sure if you if you've been watching all of my writing vlogs, you know, it's been kind of like a very weird up and down experience with this book. Um, <laughs> my publisher initially thought it was going to do a lot of stuff and it did do a lot of stuff. But then when we came to like hard and fast sales, it kind of like wasn't what we had been wanting. Um, but and so that was like kind of like hard and rough for me um, way back in February slash March when that happened. And then I like recovered and I like resolved everything. And I was like, I'm very, very happy with my book and very proud of Delicious Monsters and very appreciative of everyone that like was enjoying it and tell me they were enjoying the book. And I had really just kind of like <laughs> done from there. Um, so it's kind of wild now to see like, you know, things that were already already good things were happening and more good things and so it's kind of a very funny weird like split in which like <laughs> I was kind of technically already told that it didn't do what it was supposed to do but I'm like I think it's doing pretty damn good so I feel like this is <laughs> <laughs> further showing of that so I'm really excited about that um so of course I made myself up so I could make a TikTok so I could ask people to vote for me on TikTok so um but yeah, that's already over and done with by the time you're watching this video, but uh, very exciting. And to me, it's about visibility more than anything. Like The more people that can see my book, they can potentially decide to read it. And like at the end of the day, that's what's important for me. And I know Goodreads is big. And so I really appreciate the visibility of like people being able to see that my book was nominated now. And, you know, maybe they'll check it out and they'll be like, oh, you know, I haven't heard of that one before or I have heard of that one before, but I didn't get around to reading it. So like, let me read it now. So very, very exciting stuff. <laughs> so um, yeah, I really just popped on to talk about that. So now I, I didn't manage somehow through that to write a chapter. Um, and so now I just have to go through and do some more little edits today. I'm, I made notes on a bunch of the chapters for like little things I needed to edit. And so I'm going to try and go through all of those today. So uh, yeah, remember when I said I thought doing the process this way would be faster. <laughs> it's not faster. It is not faster. But I do feel like this is working, question mark. It, it does make me feel like this process of like, you know, doing a single element throughout the whole book and like doing that on its own, it does make the process feel like slightly chaotic. <laughs> Like it kind of does feel like I'm just jumping over everywhere because I mean I technically am because I'm just jumping to whichever chapter is relevant for whatever thing I'm working on that day. Um, right now I'm still in the process of uh, 
doing the little tweaks so there were some chapters where i like thought of little like on the fly edits that needed to happen in every chapter um and so i've done half of those already and i'm just gonna do the other half today i did the first half on friday um and get through and do those and that's kind of my mission for today if you will and then i think tomorrow i'm starting to work on like the um sort of main character elements so one of them being like her family relationships and establishing those a little bit more um and then another i think is just like smoothing out her character arc um which i do feel like i finally really figured out well i did end up having to change the shard of glass thing a little bit more um which is like if you don't know the shard of glass it's like basically like the thing that happened in a character's past that is making them function the way they are now um and so i had the way she's functioning now and i smoothed that out but then it kind of didn't seem to make sense given what her kind of shard of glass thing was um because yeah it just like kind of didn't make sense because a lot of this for her it, as the main character is about like expectations and expectations being put on her and how that kind of you know she feels like she ultimately disappoints people so now she's at this point where she is like i'm just gonna disappoint you first and then i don't have to worry about expectations being put on me i'm just gonna disappoint you first and the thing about the book is that she's forced into this situation where she has new expectations put on her and that she has to be involved in this competition um, for the purposes of helping her brother and now there is there is an expectation that she does well there's an expectation that she wins um and there are multiple winners in this contest so it's not so far-fetched for her to win but um yeah so then she has to live with that and she's being forced to go to university which she decided she wasn't going to do and so now she also has to perform well because if she gets put on academic probation she is uh disqualified from the competition and so those are building up and that becomes very difficult for her and that's part of her whole thing is like these expectations but it didn't make sense during with the shard of glass because the shard of glass was just like that her mom disappeared and that she like missed a call from her and i was like that doesn't really play into the expectation disappointment thing um so i switched it up to make it so that like her mom kind of puts a lot of pressure on her and the first time that she kind of pushes back against that and like actually disappoints her mom is the same day that her mom disappears so then it's kind of like it gets tied up in that like she the one time like she spent her whole life being perfect and the one time she disappointed her mom is the same time that is the same day that she lost her mom and so it's very much a feeling of well i guess i'm just gonna ultimately disappoint people and they're going to leave me um when i disappoint them so i'll disappoint them first and then i don't have to be afraid of them leaving me um and so that's kind of like the whole thing and i think that's come together quite well now so i feel like i have a really solid thing to work with so that's good but yeah it is taking it's going to take just as long as the other method but i do think it's worth trying this method because i do think it is like helping me and i think it's working out and it is helping me be able to focus on one kind of thing at a time and i do find that to be helpful because it feels like i'm pulling pieces together in a better way um and then hopefully that read through that kind of like rapid read through that i'm going to do in the last week of working on this will help me with tying everything together and feeling like the edits are cohesive seems to hold me like you do mm -hmm. you're so wonderful a star could never shine as bright as you mm -hmm. even the dark they still see light even the birds still sing at night every word just comes out right when i'm with you with you i So lucky I met you and I still 
can't believe that I get to see those sacks from my fully descended into that thing where the holidays get closer and your motivation <laughs> just like just plummets uh i feel like that's the point where i'm sitting at right now especially because my birthday is also at the end of the month and so i feel like it just gets wrapped into the whole holidays and then i'm just like in that mode where i only kind of want to do fun stuff and i feel like that's how i've been this week is i have been doing the work but it's been a bit of a like pulling teeth situation and I've become distracted by like doing the things that are like the fun work things which for me is like prepping these prize pack items for the tender beast pre-order slash library quest campaign um it should be live by the time this video goes up maybe possibly um if it is I will link it down below so you can check out um all the details on it but uh one person there's a bunch of like paper goods and stuff that everybody will get but one person will get this like prize pack with all this extra stuff which i am personally making <laughs> so uh you saw me i'm in the b-roll i made that pennant flag um i'm gonna make a book tote i started one book tote but i don't think i like it so i think i've i've ordered some different fabric i'm gonna try and make a different one because i think i'll like that one better um and then I got to prep to do some screen printing tests. I've already done one screen printing test, um, which I also showed on this vlog. You saw that I did it backwards. So I've learned from that. Um, and so I want to do a couple more tests. Um, but yeah, so it essentially means I'm kind of like, <laughs> those are the things that I'm enjoying doing. And so those are what I like keep doing because um, they're like work, but they're not work. But my motivation for the actual writing is kind of like, it's a little bit difficult, but I think in some ways that's almost beneficial because the lack of motivation <laughs> is making me slow down um, and really consider the whole work um, because even you know when I'm not working on it and I am thinking about it and so the more time I get to that's Bobo the more time I get to think and consider the kind of better it is for me and for this project in particular because I feel like I've gotten this feeling of feeling rushed with this project, um, which I've not had with other projects. I always felt like I had enough time to do everything necessary. And this project, like a mastery of monsters, I felt rushed. <laughs> um, and I think that was kind of from the start, you know, when I drafted this in 2022, um, I was kind of running, I had gotten a grant for it and I was kind of running up against the deadline for the grant. And so then I did this like NaNoWriMo and I kind of just like, put it out and that I was really unsatisfied with it because I couldn't get everything done in the timeline and so I left a lot of stuff out and then it felt really lacking and so that's why I had put the project on hold for when I had more time but then I had this whole submission thing happen I will link the video below I'm um, talking about the book deal for Master of Monsters <laughs> so you can see that whole saga through that video um but essentially I had to put together a proposal for the book very, very quickly. And so then that was rushed. And then I was like, okay, now I have time to work on the book and put things together. And then I felt like things were like going okay and going good. And I felt like I had like a good pace and I was getting time to do everything. And then I sent it to my editor and she flipped it back in a week. And was like, okay, what about this deadline? And then commence where I am now which is like feeling rushed again um especially with uh the mention of like trying to get edits back to me before the holidays I'm like oh my god like you know and so I'm really trying to pull back from that feeling and to take the time that I need which is why I ended up asking for a longer deadline than what was initially proposed I asked for an extra two weeks I believe um, and I'm just trying to make sure that I give this book the time it needs because I know if it's rushed I'm going to come out with a poor product um, and to my knowledge there's no reason for any feeling of rushness <laughs> so i'm really like telling myself to take my time and i think because i'm not really motivated i'm not doing extra work like sometimes when i if i feel rushed or i feel like oh my gosh i'm a little bit like pressed for time i'll start doing extra work um and like making things quite honestly more difficult for myself but because i'm so unmotivated i was like i really can't 
do extra. Like I have to take the full time that I asked for <laughs> um, and even have to build breaks into that time that I asked for because I just need the break from it, um, which to me has been beneficial because it gives me more time to think about what I'm doing with the book, especially because this is going to be a series and I need to think about things that are going to be happening in the other books and like what am I putting into this book and all of that. And so I feel like my big challenge slash thing that I'm really trying to do with the Mastery of Monsters in particular is I really need to take my time a little bit um, and get time for those things. Like I even think about this, you know, read through that I need to do and I'm going to do the read through in a week just so that I can, you know, absorb things better. Um, but I also need to be able to take my time with that because I'd like to clean up the prose a little bit. Um, there's a lot of just like, you know, little cliche things that are in there. Um, and I think normally for a developmental edit, I wouldn't be caring about line let it line level things right now, but because I know this is the version of the manuscript that is going to be sent to UK publishers to see if they want to buy it, I do in fact care about the prose because it needs to be what I might send on submission because it is technically going on submission. Um, and when I went on submission, I was only getting six chapters ready for that um, versus the whole manuscript. And so that's kind of the big difference. So yeah. Not feeling super motivated, but also trying to take it easy on myself. And I guess that's kind of the theme for this vlog slash this book in general. It's not optional. How gravity just pulls me right to you. To you. Even the dark, they still see light. Even the birds still sing at night. Every word just comes out right when I'm with you. With you. I feel so lucky I met you. And I still. Can't believe that I get to see those eyes from both ends and I swear you must have felt from the sky and I feel so lucky I met you. Spend my whole life waiting for someone like you, baby. And all these broken roses led to you. Spend my whole life waiting for someone like you, baby. And all these broken roses led. So I was really unsatisfied with the mystery in A Mastery of Monsters. And so because I've been breaking this out into like different sections, I'm like just, or I'm just finishing up, or I did just finish, I did just, I'm, anyway, I'm just finishing up the red herrings, which will be the last sort of element of reconstructing the mystery. So I like redid hints for like, the whodunit. I redid um, some of the like character stuff so I could make things fit better and I've just gone through all of the red herrings and that's gonna be like it for like reconstructing this mystery and I'm really pleased with what I've done because I had these red herrings and they were sort of attached to groups and it really didn't work well because I was like, I think a red herring should be a person. Like you should be thinking about the personal, well, red herrings can be a lot of things, but I, I was really thinking about like wanting the like people associated with those groups to be suspects. And so by making it the whole group, I was just making it really difficult for I think readers to hone in on anyone. And so I made it where I have like people, people red herrings <laughs> and it's so much better now. I'm really pleased with it. Um, I will note also that this is not something my editor mentioned at all, um, but it was bothering me <laughs> a lot <laughs> because I thought it was so bad. For one, I thought it was extremely obvious who the whodunit was. Like I thought the whole solution to that was very, very obvious. And so I didn't like that for one. Um, and then for another, I felt like the people, you know, the other suspects weren't really like working out. Like I felt like it was hard to understand why they were suspects. And I feel like now it's much more clear. But as a side effect, 
everyone is suspicious. Everyone is suspicious. <laughs> There are so many characters where I'm like, oh my god, they're all so suspicious now. Like, everyone is sus and everyone is doing sus shit all the time. And I'm like, is this okay? <laughs> because part of it is like stuff that is happening in this book, but part of it is set up for books to come. So I, I'm like... You know what I mean? <laughs> like people are doing a lot of different things and you're not going to learn all those things they're doing in the first book. But now I'm starting to wonder, is that going to create a problem? And I think I keep having this issue too, where I'm like, is it going to create a problem? And I think the difference about this, the difference between a series like my blood like duology, the thing about those books is they were very their own Thing. and the things that were affecting it was very much like this is the first book this is blood like magic and blood like fate is like a reaction to a bunch of things that happened in blood like magic so there wasn't a ton of like carryover setup things it was just kind of like this is its own thing and this is the reaction to this and so they felt very Com compartmentalized. Um, whereas A Mastery of Monsters, I feel like the books are all kind of blended together in a way um, because of all the world building things that I've made so very complicated and all the lore and everything to be discovered throughout the series, which I'm hoping will be third books, still don't know. And... <laughs> I think that is creating a unique challenge because it's like I'm setting up stuff and I need to set it up because it's coming in the next book and I think an edit that I did that I'm very happy about with this first book is that I made that relevant like there's a certain group in the first book where they're not really huge until the second book but I needed to set them up in the first one and so but they weren't weaved in enough into the narrative of the first one for it to make sense that they were mentioned at all. Like it very felt tacked on, it felt very weird, and now I've incorporated it, I think, much better. So that's great. But that was a thing. Like that was a thing where I was like, I have to put this in the first book because I need to set it up. Because I can't just start a second book and be like, and here's this thing that I never once talked about. And now it's relevant to this story, which I guess I could do, but I don't care. A lot. I don't really care for when series do that. I think there's a time and place. There's some things that you know don't come up in a first book just because it's not really relevant. But some things are so big that I'm like, come on like you needed to mention that in the first book and I know the way series happen it's just you might not get to do that <laughs> but I want to do that and so doing that amount of setup is just like yeah it boggles the mind it boggles the mind but because of all of that again everyone is suspicious now so who knows how this will go um I'll really get the best sense of this when I do the read through so I'm going to be doing the read through next week because my birthday is on Thursday um, and I'm going to take my birthday off. <laughs> so I'm kind of just wrapping up my last few things. I just have to finish off this red herring stuff today and then I'm going to do some world building stuff um, as well. And so then I just need to kind of like get all of that wrapped up and then I'll be good. I'll have done all my little bits and pieces and then I can just go straight into doing this read through and trying to make everything feel cohesive now that I've done things very piecemeal so who knows how that's gonna go hopefully gonna go well because at the end of next week it's my deadline so I kind of have to do it so yeah I mean I think I think it's probably gonna be a tough week but it uh, needs to be done so that's what's happening um, but yeah so this has been a very long way to say I'm very pleased with how the mystery has shaken out now um, I do wonder if perhaps everyone is too sus and I've introduced too many questions at the end um, because I want enough to like draw people into being like, oh my God, I got to read the next book. But I don't want so much that people are going to be like, what did I even learn in this book? <laughs> what even happened here? Was there any resolution to anything? You know what I mean? I don't want readers to feel like that. <laughs> I think there's a fine line between I'm intrigued 
about the next book and I'm pissed off that I felt like I wasted my time wanting to know what was going on in the first book. So that's where I'm at. my birthday today uh today i've turned 32 um i was thinking earlier <laughs> about how like when you read like a ya high fantasy book and they don't want to say birthday because it's like do birthdays exist which I, is kind of interesting but anyway so they'll say things like with the season i'm like I'm 32 winters old <laughs> But yeah, very exciting. I My mom called me to wish me happy birthday and I was like, being in your 30s, um, or at least for me being in my 30s, feels like being in my 20s except I have money. <laughs> except I have money to actually do the things I want. Um, uh, and I am also perhaps significantly less self-conscious about the things I do. Um, but I overall feel like this is the peak of my life like I feel like every year I'm like better than the last like I feel like I'm doing better with the exception perhaps of 2020 which was like a bit of a weird back and forth but um I feel like I'm leveling up consistently um I like will look at my little shelves and I remember when like my dream was just to publish one book one book that was it I wasn't even thinking past that. <laughs> I wanted to publish one book um, and to like look at my little top shelf with the array of books I've published by now. I've published four books so far. I have a fifth coming up, two more on the way, um, uh, two more anthologies on the way too. So very um, excited and I'm very uh, proud of what I have managed to accomplish in my uh, 32 years on this giant floating rock which I try not to think about too much because I actually think that like freaks me out a little bit when I think about the fact that we're literally just on a giant floating rock in space. What a concept. Anywho, so this is the end of the vlog. Originally I was going to extend the vlog because my deadline is um, the end of next week so I was like oh, I'll extend it a week because I don't do a January vlog because I don't vlog during December. Um, I just decided that's the thing I'm gonna do especially because in January I post so much like beginning of the year content that it's like there's not even really room for a vlog anyway and I just I just don't want to vlog during December. December is my vlog free month so <laughs> um, but I figured I'd extend extend it just the one week so that we could finish off working on Mastery of Monsters um, but I got an email from my editor and her schedule has shifted and so now I don't have to deliver the manuscript until the 1st of January. So um, what I've decided to do is I want to take an extra week to do this read. The current state of A Mastery of Monsters is that all the changes I needed to do, like all the things I put in plotter to get done, all of those have been done. But because I did them in silos, um, the manuscript itself is very messy <laughs> and sometimes I was doing little changes on the fly and so I know there's some world building elements where I was like this should really be explained to her earlier but I was like the same thing might have been explained to her later on because I didn't know where to go back and change it yet and so it's kind of like it's a messy manuscript it's very messy and so my original plan was that I was going to read through the whole thing in a week so I was going to do 10 chapters a day which I know for me is a lot to read through in a day. It's a lot to read through in a day. So what I 
am going to do now that I have the extra time is I decided to take one extra week so that I can do six chapters per day and so this will be a little bit less daily and this will allow me to sorry there's something on my eye this will allow me to um get the read through done um but also do it in a way in which I can spend a little bit more time um and I can also um correct the prose because as I said before like this is the version that's going to go to UK publishers and if I have time and I can like make the prose better and I can really elevate it instead of just doing the dev edit that's what I'd really like to be able to do and if I do six chapters a day it will be much more possible for me to get that done and so I let my agent know that that's what I'm going to be doing and so basically that extended things two weeks and I was like I'm not going to add on two weeks to this November vlog <laughs> so I'm just going to end it here it is perhaps slightly unsatisfying because I didn't get to finish the stage of working on the project and usually with my vlogs I like so like to finish a stage before I get done but it's just it's not going to happen this time around it's not going to happen um but I will be posting in January, I'll be posting a project update. And so I will let you know the status of the project in that project update. But the edits, the big edits, I did finish in this vlog. It's just the read through that I have left. Um, and then I'll be taking some time off, some vac vacation time off. And then in January, kind of hit the ground running with the, the next round of edits from Mastery of Monsters. By that time, we'll also have the sensitivity reader feedback as well. So I can incorporate that in um, and then um, after that I'll be able to get back into working on my adult which is kind of nice because now that I know what the timeline is going to be more um, concretely for Mastery Monsters I know that like I'll do my Mastery Monsters edits in January and then I can do my adult thriller edits in February and so that makes me feel positive about my goal of kind of wanting to get that on submission in kind of April May um, so I'm very excited about all of that but yeah that's really the end of this vlog um, November wow I, <laughs> I feel like this was the month of like I am already in winter holidays mode like I want to stop <laughs> but I made it through made it through because we're at the end here um, I'm very excited to get to celebrate my birthday I'm probably just gonna kind of hang out and chill and read all day um, I'll probably put some b-roll of that before this clip because I don't know that I had time to record b-roll. I didn't think I would be doing my ending clip today. But here we are um, and it's for the better because I really like I talked about you know feeling a little bit rushed and so the fact that I now have all this extra time is really making me feel very very good. <laughs> I feel like I'm gonna have a really really strong first developmental edit um, which is what I wanted so I'm really actually very happy about having all of this extra time and it lets me kind of like chill out and if I for whatever reason needed more time I would have it and I could take it so very excited about all of that but yeah I guess I will see you in the new year there will still be videos in December this isn't the only video in December <laughs> I am gonna post the finale the final Save the Cat uh, deep dive series video um, and then I'm also gonna have an end of the year wrap up reflection thing but otherwise for vlogs I will see you I guess in February technically not even in the new year but anyway if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and thank you so much for watching bye but it's okay cuz I promise I'll love you anyway so sunshine